Hey there, I'm Jim Tierney, and welcome to another segment of the video series on shooting time-lapse. In this segment, I'm going to talk about stabilization, a really incredibly important part of time-lapse. Obviously, if your camera is moving over the course of the few hours or so that you are out there, uh, you're going to have lots of problems. So, let's talk about what you can do to stabilize things and what you can do if things aren't quite as stable as you would like them to be. And I'm going to start off by going through a few bullet points because bullet points are exciting. And that's exactly what you want to see. I realize that. But uh, just to kind of cut through the chase and cover a bunch of points really quickly, they are pretty useful. So let's uh, tear through the bullet points and then we'll uh, jump into After Effects and actually show you how to stabilize things. All right, so the first thing though is that, of course, you need a tripod. If you're going to be doing time-lapse, you can't do it handheld, especially uh, if you're doing it over a few hours. And the first thing you want to look for is stable ground. Now, the shot that I'm going to be talking about throughout this video series is this Bay Bridge shot. And I am on a pier on the uh, San Francisco Embarcadero. And piers like this are just fraught with danger. You've got the waves kind of going up against the pier. You've got, in this case, traffic very close to the pier. And if you have a big truck roll along the street that's right by the pier, you can, it will certainly shake it. Now, in this case, it's a big, solid concrete pier, so it shouldn't be really affected too much by that stuff. But you really need to be aware of the ground that you're on. For example, if you're on a wooden pier, it's much more likely to shake. And so the first thing you need to do is be on stable ground as much as possible, or at least be aware that the ground that you're on, such as a pier, may affect your shot, and you may have problems with it. The second thing to be aware of is protect the camera from the wind. The wind is the biggest cause of shaky time lapse. Now, I like to, if possible, position the camera next to a wall or a rock so that it's protected from the wind. But if you don't have that option, if you're just out in the middle of nowhere and it's windy, sometimes you have to be the wind block. And yes, I have stood in front of my camera for a couple hours acting as a wind block, preventing the wind from affecting the shot. It's just one of the sacrifices sometimes you have to make to have good time lapses. And in truth, any gust of wind can shake the camera, so it's something you really have to be aware of. But if you can position the camera next to, like I said, a rock or a wall or something like that, uh, it'll go a long way to preventing that from happening. Uh, you can also weigh the tripod down. Uh, you can put sandbags on it. You can attach something to the center pole of the tripod. If you do that, you want to make sure that whatever you attach to that center pole is actually weighted down onto the ground. You don't want it to become basically a pendulum. That's not going to help the stabilization at all. If it's windy and you attach, say, a bag of oranges to the bottom of your middle tripod pole and they start swinging, it's really not going to help. And to that end, you don't want any hanging stuff. You don't want straps hanging off of it. You don't want any cords attached to it. So make sure that everything that's connected to the camera is absolutely necessary, and if it is necessary, that it is taped to the tripod or very securely attached to the tripod. Also, the correct tripod feet can make a difference. Uh, if you're on a hard surface, like concrete or a wooden floor, sometimes Having rubber feet attached to the tripod are, is very useful. If you're on softer material, like, say, dirt, most tripods also have spiked feet, and those would be more appropriate for dirt, sand, stuff like that. And then the last thing that is sometimes recommended is to lock the mirror up on the camera. The reason for this is you don't want the mirror shaking the camera as it's trying to shoot the picture. It's just another reason for vibrations to happen on, in the camera. And so it can be helpful. 
is not the biggest cause of vibrations. Uh, certainly wind is much more important. But this is one of the small things that you can do to help get sharper shots and eliminate shakiness. And this is really, all this stuff is really important at night because obviously you're doing longer exposures. It's possible to end up with light trails and, bl and serious blurriness if the camera shakes at all. You know, if you're shooting during the day, you've got a really fast shutter speed. You know, if there's a little bit of shakiness, you know, this is something that can be fixed in post. You'd rather not. But if you have nice sharp shots and the camera's just moving a tiny bit, uh, that can be stabilized in post as I'm about to show you. But at night, you're gonna end up with blurriness and light trails, and it's just really impossible to fix. So especially at night, you really wanna make sure that the tripod and the camera are just super stable. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Let's dive into After Effects and actually see what's going on and how we can fix any stabilization problems. So despite all the things I just told you, in this shot, we have shake. So let's take a look at this. You can see that the camera is shifting just a little bit. You can see the bridge is moving around. And I can assure you that the Bay Bridge does not normally do that. So the shot is pretty shaky. But luckily, After Effects and also Adobe Premiere Pro has something called the Warp Stabilizer. And we've already applied this, so I'm going to turn this on. And it's a really awesome stabilizer. It works in 3D, which is not necessarily important for our purposes. But the interesting thing is, and I can turn on my points, is that the stabilizer automatically identifies different points in the image and uses that to automatically track the shot and in this case stabilize it. So this is an awesome improvement over the traditional tracker that was in After Effects which was a two-point tracker which was helpful but certainly not as effective as the warp stabilizer. Part of the problem with time-lapse shots is that the lighting is changing, what's in the scene is changing, and it's can be very difficult to find a point that is going to be in the entire scene. And the warp stabilizer, by identifying multiple points, as you can see, makes the process of stabilization much, much easier. And so now we can play this back and see what that shaky shot looks like after being stabilized. And we can see that it looks much, much better. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the Warp Stabilizer. And we'll talk about uh, some other tips and tricks for making it work even better. The first thing that happens, and I'm going to come in here and apply it to a completely new version of this shot. Uh, in After Effects, it's under Effect, Distort, Warp Stabilizer, VFX. And it's recommended that you do this step within After Effects, uh, the version in Premiere is not quite as good. And the first thing you'll see is that when you first apply Warp Stabilizer, it applies this nifty bar with this text saying it's analyzing. And what happens with Warp Stabilizer is it analyzes in the background. You can still continue to work in After Effects, but it needs to analyze every single frame. And that can take a little while, especially for high-resolution shots like this. So it's not something that's immediate. But uh, once it's finished, uh, you'll see that it does an amazing job at tracking things and keeping things stable. But just so you know, when you first apply it, you're going to get this analyzing text here. And that's normal. And you can see that in this case, it's, gonna, it's estimating it'll take about an hour to finish this. So this process can take a little while. And so I'm going to go back to our ready-made shot. Borrow a page from Julia Childs and go back to the comp where we have already run Warp Stabilizer. And now we'll talk about some of the parameters. So with time-lapse, you want to make sure this is set to no motion. Our camera is on a tripod, locked down. We don't want to see any motion at all. The smooth motion is more important if you have, like, say, a handheld camera 
and you're trying to make that a little bit less jittery. In that case, smooth motion would be more appropriate, but not for time lapse. Now the method here, uh, we usually, I, I usually leave it to subspace warp. In reality, really all you need is position, but this is a little bit better version of the stabilizer. So we'll leave that at subspace warp. In the case of borders, I want stabilize only. You can also select stabilize and crop. So either of these two will work just fine. But for time lapse, you definitely don't want the auto scale and you definitely don't want synthesized edges. Both of these are not appropriate for time lapse. Uh, either stabilize or stabilize and crop. And you also want to check off detailed analysis. This is going to make it even slower, but usually not by that much. And in this, and in the case of time lapse, because we want it to be rock solid, you really want it to do as complex of an analysis as possible. So this is very important to have checked off. And of course, our objective is to stabilize. There's some other options in here, but for time lapse, stabilize is just fine. And those are the main things. You also want to have preserved scale checked off. You don't want the stabilizer trying to scale the image up and down. That is definitely not appropriate for time lapse. Again, because we have the camera just on a tripod, we just really want the image to be as still as possible. And these settings are going to help you get there. Now there's some other interesting things on here like show track points, which can be helpful to see what the stabilizer is identifying as points it should track. Uh, you can delete these points, but usually it does a pretty good job. Now, one thing that happened with this, because it's a 32 second long clip, it turned out that it didn't do a perfect job. You can see that the image is changing a lot. We're doing a sunset image. We've got the moon rising. We've got the of course, the sun going down and the lights coming up. And because the warp stabilizer is analyzing all 32 seconds of this, it did a good job, but there was still a little bit of shakiness to it. And so what I ended up doing was breaking down the shot into about five or six second segments and then applying warp stabilizer to each of those. And this actually resulted in a much better stabilization when the warp stabilizer only had about five or six seconds to analyze, it, did, it was able to do a much better job of stabilizing everything. I did have to manually put these segments together. So I had to go to the frame where there was the transition and make sure that they were properly aligned. And you can see that I've done that. So that's the only downside to this method, but in this case, you know, I only have six segments here and so I really only need to line up those six segments of course and so it really wasn't very difficult and it resulted in a much nicer stabilization. If the warp stabilizer isn't stabilizing it perfectly you might try to do this trick. For this shot it was very effective and gave me a very nice stabilization which we can take a look at. And we can see the time-lapse shot is just perfectly stabilized. No shakiness whatsoever. There's a little bit of flicker, but that is what we're going to talk about in the next video segment. So stay with us for that. And I hope you enjoyed this on stabilization. Again, let's just recap. Again, we were using the warp stabilizer in After Effects. Uh, like I said, there is a version of this in Premiere Pro. It's not quite as advanced as the After Effects version, so I usually recommend doing the stabilization pass in After Effects if you have the ability to do so. But it is in Premiere, and you can do it there. And just remember our bullet points about what's necessary to keep your camera stable. And the primary thing here is protect it from the wind however you need to do so, even if that means that you have to stand right next to it and be the wind block. 
So on that happy note, I will leave you and uh, check us out in the next segment where we will talk about removing flicker from time-lapse sequences. So thanks again for joining me and see you in the next one.